Hey guys, what's up? My name is Cameron Penner and welcome back to a great new tutorial. Today, I'm going to be showing you guys how to do a little bit of path planning. We're going to be using the built-in path planner in GameMaker, but we are also going to modify the way that we're using it a little bit just so we end up with a bit smoother animations and movement uh, from our objects. So if we go ahead and make this invisible, you'll see. Uh, so this is what the path planner will look like when you're using it. Uh, you'll see we can have multiple guys path planning at the same time. Uh, they can update their their destinations in real time. And it's all pretty smooth and it looks pretty classy. So let's go ahead and jump on with the tutorial. Alright, so what you're going to want to start is a couple sprites. Um, this is going to be the wall sprite. Make this the size of whatever grid you're going to be using. 32 by 32 is often default for game makers, so that should work well. Um, then also make a path planner sprite, but make sure this one's centered. This is going to be the sprite for the object that's actually planning its way in between these walls. Uh, and these walls should be at 0, 0, just to make placing them a little easier. Then we're also going to want maybe a target object, that's optional. Uh, and we're also going to want an entity, and this guy is going to be actually traversing the maze or world. And what I would recommend is making this guy a little bit thinner than uh, the size of the grid just to help him squeeze through those tight spaces a little bit easier. You'll also want this guy centered. So what we can do is we can go ahead and make a um, wall object. This is this is going to be what we place throughout the room. So if we go ahead and into our test room here, um, hold down control and shift, we can place a whole bunch of these walls. This is uh, this is what our objects will be going through, so we can go ahead and make a little test room like this. Um, what I would recommend is not putting the walls too tight together because sometimes the objects can have a hard time squeezing through there, so whatever your grid size is, maybe give it a little bit extra space in that. If your sprite is thin enough, you can go ahead and put them close together, but it just might cause problems, uh, so just keep that in mind. We're also going to want uh, an object that is going to be our controller. This is going to handle setting up the grid. We are also going to want a uh, that target that we were talking about or some other way of handling location. This guy doesn't matter too much because this is going to be customized depending on uh, how you want your objects actually following the path. Then we are also going to want uh, the entity. And this is a guy that's actually going to go through the the uh, maze or whatever. And we're actually going to have another object that's going to be bound to the entity that's going to be our path planner. And we're going to give this guy that centered sprite like we talked about before. And what's going to happen is in our room we'll have uh, entities throughout and then we'll have a target here and they'll all be able to path plan to that target. So. If we go into our controller, this guy's going to set up our grid, and we're going to be using the uh, MP grid. Um, if you go ahead and smack F1, you can look up MP grid, and this is going to give you a little bit more information. If you go ahead and read through this, there's a whole bunch of good stuff in there uh, that can fill you in on, on what's all going on. But I should be able to walk through it here with you guys. So go in into the controller and add a create event. Here we're going to want some code, and in here we are going to create a global variable, global var, and we're going to call this guy grid. Grid is going to be the world that our guy is going through, and it's just another representation that our objects can use to, um, to keep track of where they are. So if we go in here and we say grid equals mp grid create, so right now we're going to initialize the grid uh, and set up our path planning world. So left and top, uh, we'll set that to zero, zero. That's the position in the room. Uh, H cells, this is the number of, of cells you want to have. This is the horizontal number. So we're going to say room width uh, divided by 32 is gonna be our grid size. And then for V cells, we want to, and I'm getting the parameters from the bottom here, in case you didn't know. Uh, we're going to say room height 
divided by 32, the grid size again. Uh, and then our cell width is 32 and our cell height is 32. So this is going to create us a grid throughout the whole world, uh, just like this grid you see here. And and this is just going, right now this grid is actually empty and it doesn't know where these walls are. So let's go ahead and add those walls to the grid. So to do that, we'll say MP grid add uh, instances. And then we're just going to say grid is the ID of the grid that we're adding instances to. And then we will say object wall. And these are the grids that are going to be counted as obstacles. Uh, and then we will say false because we don't care about precision for this particular case. Uh, so right now we have the grid uh, initialized and we have the walls all added. So anyone that uses this grid for path planning will know where the walls are. So uh, that's all for the controller object. Now let's go to our path planner uh, after we write a quick script. So let's add a script and call it plan. And what this is going to do is um, plan a route from the current position to a target location. So we'll plan from target X, target Y, and this little top bit here is just later for when we're using it, we know what the parameters are. So we'll say, um, actually we don't want that to be var. So we'll say target x equals argument zero, and we'll say target y equals argument one. So this is going to set the variable target x and y for whoever this script gets called on. Uh, now we also want to plan a path through that grid that we just created. So let's say MP grid path. Um, and then we are going to say grid. That's a global variable, so we will be able to access it from anywhere. Uh, then we're also going to say path. And path is going to be the path that we are saving this this uh, path that we're creating now, we're going to save this to the variable path, uh, which we will be creating later on. And then we will also say starting positions x and y, and then goal is going to be target x and target y. Uh, and then allow diagonal, let's say true, because it'll just smooth out our motion just a little bit. And then we want to also go ahead and say path start. Uh, and we will say path, which is the path that we just wrote to with this guy here. Uh, speed, we're going to actually say zero. Then we are going to say path action um, stop. And actually, thinking about this now, this can be um, whatever speed we actually want to be moving on the path. So we'll just put this as eight for now. Uh, so path action stop. So once you get to the end of the path, then you'll stop moving. Uh, and then we will also say uh, true. And this is going to mean it is absolute in the world. So that's all we'll need for here. And then we will go ahead to our um, path planner. And let's go ahead and make this guy traverse through the map. So we'll add a create event. And here we're going to create that path we were talking about. Path equals add path. Uh, path add, sorry. Um, and that's going to just create a path and insert it into this variable here. That's all we'll need in the create event. Let's just add a little bit more temporary code here before we move on. So we'll go to a step event and step. Uh, and if we say plan uh, object target.x and object target.y. This is going to go ahead and make sure that uh, our object will be moving towards the target. Uh, and technically you don't need to be actually running that every single step, but, um, but uh, you'll see that this will make a difference if we change stuff in the future. So if we would go ahead and say mouse, global mouse, left pressed, and we would say, oh, sorry, this is off to the side here. And say mouse x, uh, x equals mouse x, and y equals mouse y. Uh, then we'll see 
that our objects will update their path as we go. So we can go ahead and move this wherever and they'll follow it. But right now they're following a very rigid path and they don't look very organic. So what we actually want to do is use these guys to solve the path and we want to have another entity actually be the character moving around. So let's go ahead and take out this empty code um, and, and go ahead and start making our entity. So here what we're going to want to do is um, add a create event and in here we're going to want to say planner and this is going to be a reference to uh, our path planner object. We're going to say instance well, instance create uh, and we're going to create it at x, y and we're going to create an object path planner. And now we're going to want to say planner dot follower equals ID. And what this is going to do is now our entity is going to have a link to its own path planner and our planner is also going to have a link to its own follower. So they'll be able to easily identify each other and call events on each other if they need to. So we're also going to want to add um, code that makes our entity actually follow the, the planner. So we're going to actually want this to be an end step. But if we go to our code here, and we don't really need a breakpoint, um, we can go ahead and say target x uh, equals object target dot x and target y equals object target dot y. And these variables can be any position you want. So if you want it to follow your player, go ahead and make these your player. If you want him to find a med pack somewhere on the map, go ahead and change this to that. So this can be absolutely anything. And these positions here are going to be the actual location that your character will end up moving to. So now we also want to say with planner, and this is that path planner that we added a reference to before, then we want to say x equals follower.x, and we want to say y equals follower dot y. Uh, we also want to say plan other dot target x and other dot target y. And what this is going to do is other will actually reference these variables when you use a with. Um, so other will actually reference the object calling uh, the with. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, we are also going to want to actually do some motion in our end step. And we're going to do that before we call all of this stuff because what happens is when plan gets called and our object actually starts moving, uh, it doesn't actually take that motion until later on. So we just want to make sure that this, is, this has been moved before we come back and actually do our move. So what's going to happen is we're going to do a move and then we're going to update our path planner so that next time we get back to that move, it'll actually get called. So what we can do here is we can say motion add uh, and then say point direction x y planner dot x planner dot y and then choose your speed and we'll just say one here uh, and then we'll also say if speed is greater than four then speed equals four. And what this is going to be is our max speed, and this is actually our acceleration speed. So if you want, you can just make this four right away, but then it, again, won't be as smooth and won't look very nice. So set this to however fast you want him to accelerate, and set this to however fast you want his max speed to be. So if we go ahead and press OK now, and we take some of these path planners out of our room because we don't actually need them there. Uh, and we try running this, I think it should just work. Cross our fingers, here we go. Uh, and everything's working great. And we can update this path in real time as we go. And everything looks very smooth. Now the only problem is um, our objects actually could go through right through a wall if they tried to. They shouldn't ever do that. But let's add some collisions just to be sure that that, that, that never happens. Uh, so we'll go ahead and add collision with wall and then here I like to just do 
uh, dire uh, equals direction, and then do something like move bounce solid, uh, and then say true, uh, and then go ahead and motion add dire and speed divided by three or something. And what this is going to do is just make sure that if it does end up uh, hitting a wall, it does bounce nicely. Uh, and this shouldn't ever really come into play, but if, say, for example, you want to be pushing, putting forces on these objects, then uh, that'll just help make sure that those collisions are cleaned up. So this, again, optional, um, but that potentially important. So that is all you need to know um, to, to have smooth path planning in your games. Uh, I think it's pretty simple, and I think it looks really good. So I hope all of that made sense. If you have any questions, go ahead and post a comment below. Um, and thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.